Ah, I love the smell of fresh virtual land. <laughs> Note the parcel borders, view menu, property lines is on. And if you haven't seen my previous tutorial on how I took an entire house and the surrounding arboreals and bridge, make sure to watch that first because this is actually a part two. And we're ready to res the house on a new parcel, which is roughly equivalent, the same size and all that good stuff. Okay, so in our inventory, we have it right here. Now remember a coalesced object has the name of the last object you select before taking. It doesn't say that, oh, this is a house and a bunch of stuff in it, unfortunately. But remember what it was. You absolutely need to distinguish it from, say, other objects in your inventory. And before we res, be absolutely sure to go into edit mode, control three, as I've been teaching you. You may ask, why is this important? Well, it's so important because you'll most likely want to reposition the house after resing it. And if you're not in edit, then you have to select the whole thing again, and that could be tricky. And I like to make things easy for you. Okay, so. Now, with the camera in mind, we want to get a good survey, and it's likely you will have neighbors, but I'm showing you this for instructional purposes. So just get a good look around the land, what's happening around, so you feel, and you can intuitively deduce where you might want to res this. Chances are it's probably going to be nearing the center, and then you can reposition after. All the objects in a coalesced object will res relative make sure your icon your, your cursor rather looks like this the arrow with the little positioning arrows and we're going to watch this very carefully take a very close look at selected objects and primitives because this will take a while just like it took a while to take the house and you'll want to make sure that it stabilizes because it's going to keep going upwards in chunks so let's look here you may also want to fly and to get a good view of what's going on since we can do that in Second Life. Okay, and just fly around and survey the land, your new home in Second Life. Okay, I think we've got a good understanding of what's going on here. And here we are, ready to move to your new home. So, click, drag, and release near the middle of the parcel. Don't want to go to the edges because that could result in objects being returned to you and other nastiness. Let's do it right. Release. Then give it a moment and you'll see the count climb up. It may pause at moments and it may get slower and scripts are going to reactivate. So be prepared for some text flooding that way if you have lots of scripted objects. Everything is initializing anew. Let's click this to give it focus so we can clearly see. Don't do anything if it pauses for a few seconds. I'd say give it a minute or so in really big cases just to make sure. And if you remember what the count was before when you selected and took it, that's a handy number because hey, that will tell you right there. Okay. I think that may be it. Now, in case you missed an earlier tutorial of mine and are wondering, why can't you move any of this so far? There's no positioning arrow. It's most likely because, go to object tab here, something is locked. This is worth double being aware of. So click this once and it will lock everything. You may need to give that a while. It may flash on and off wildly for a moment and then Click this again to unlock everything. Okay, now that can take a while. So we're waiting for all these objects to become unlocked. That's really important to do. Though they're just going through the motions there. And now with everything unlocked, you should be able to see the positioning arrows near the center of your entire build. But like I said before, it's best to do this in preparation before you take the objects. That will save you some headache. 
So now we can use these. And I recommend generally even working with smaller sets in this, but this is to show you what a bigger example will look and feel like. So I can click and drag and worry about terraforming later. You can always add things and shape your land in most cases. But if we wanted the bridge, say, to go back to the ground level and the stepping stones, some things may have to be adjusted to account for a shape of new land if it's not totally flat like this. It's very context sensitive. And in fact, you may spot room for improvement, flaws in your original build that you're like, hey, this new land will allow me to do some things which are even awesomer. And then we can just fine tune. It gets tricky at times. This is why camera controls are so important. You don't want to deselect it. You want to move everything once and say that one's not totally level. Those stepping stones aren't totally on the ground. So I could terraform and shape the ground to roughen it up later. Just move it and tweak it. Make sure it's totally on your parcel. It could be towards the edge, but you shouldn't have anything really overhanging or overlapping. And then when you're really happy with how your build has been positioned like this, let's just check to make sure. Remember, terraforming will help you shape the land to your build. Take advantage of that. Looking inside, let's go past the doors. Again, using the camera controls very sagely to monitor what's going on. That, okay. So everything is what you see is what you get there. When you're done, you can click somewhere else outside of this to deselect it like this. Or you can, of course, you can close this. But another way to deselect, and there is no undo for this, it's just like that. And now everything is in place. Wow, we're ready to enter our new home. So let's go ahead and fly on in. And if you made it this far, congratulations. Yeah.